Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the studio. So tonight we are going to be painting this, a black-capped chickadee. <clears throat> I'm doing this as a little bit of uh, viewer mail, or not really viewer mail, viewer comments, questions, viewer requests. There we go. Um, so we've got a black-capped chickadee. I found this uh, picture online. I rather like it. Uh, I'm going to use this as my basis. To start with, I drew my picture on my Pro Art uh, 12 by 16 inch, 140 pound watercolor paper. Oh, let me open it up. Here it is. It's pretty light. I hope you can still see it. Here he is. I hope he looks something like this. Uh, I will be using my. Oh no, I've got to run. I will be using my limited palette here of colors. I've got my color card right here so I can see that. I'll be able to tell you exactly what colors that I am using. Set that off to the side. Uh, tonight I'm going to be painting with Da Vinci uh, Squirrel Mop brush and I think I'm going to need to bring in on the, uh, the beak here maybe and some of the bristles on this pine uh, bough. A, a regular round brush, a smaller brush, a little um, totter bristles in it. Uh, but I'll tell you about those when I reach over and pull them out of the holder. Uh, so with that, I'm going to get going. I'm going to start with the background back here. And it looks like we've got, well, let me put it back up here. It looks like we've got some nice light blue here and a streak of orange down the middle. I'm going to mix up. Oh, I have forgotten to turn on the paint cam so you can see what I'm doing. There it is. And you can see my green has run in there. Just let me get that out of the way. Come on, green. What are you doing to me? There we go. Got that out of the way. So I've mixed up a little puddle of orange here, and I'm going to use a neutral blue, which for me is cobalt blue. Here it is, and I'm just going to dab this on. I'm not trying to get in any certain particular place, just trying to get the color on here. Nice and wet, or kind of around his tail. <clears throat> the color on our reference photo is not uh, all that dark in the background, and so I want to keep this just about as light. I've got a bit of orange that comes down the center here. And where it runs into our blue, I'm just going to let it mingle and meld on its own. Maybe mix up just a bit more of that for over here. And I'm trying to work a little bit quickly because it is a bit dry in my studio. And I want to be able to keep a wet edge on this. So I don't have any tide lines in it. And this is what I don't want to happen is where I mix this too much and we turn our blue and our orange, which are complementary colors, into a puddle of gray. I think we can Extend that blue out and get away from that happening. Just very quickly, not really worried about what's going on on most of this. I should say, as you see me reaching off to the side up here, if you see that, I do have water up here and a sponge that I can tap my brush off on. Also, I tend to hold in my hand a piece of uh, paper towel 
just to dab that off, dab the sides just like that. Just want to make sure I'm just looking this over right now to see if I've got anything that's puddling up. I think I'm okay with what we've got. I'm going to let that dry for just a second. I'm going to look at our painting and so we've got a little bit of white, really light white here on what I'm going to say is this bird's cheek, but then that white extends down and it gets really gray down here and some nice maybe ochre or umber color on his side. So I'm going to mix up on my palette a nice puddle of this raw umber. There we go. I'm going to use that along with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I think those two with a little mix in there, I might have to add as I'm looking back at this, and maybe it's a reflection of the blue that's around. It looks like he's got a little bit of blue in there too. We might have to dab just a bit of blue in there. I'm going to mix these, the gray and this umber color up just a little bit to warm it up. And I can go into the part of his uh, feathers that are black. I can go into that. Uh, because we're going to be painting over that, we won't see it when we're done. <clears throat> and this, as I come out to the edge of this bird, this guy, I want to give him a little bit of... A little bit less of the, the gray mixture, even though it's a warm gray mixture, and a little bit more, <coughs> excuse me, of that umber color. There we go, just down something like that. I'm going to take that onto his tail. We're going to paint his tail mostly black. And I think I do I just want to mix in a little bit of blue up here. Now see, I said I wanted to make sure I didn't have any tide lines. I let that get a little too dry. I'm just going to pull that over his, over his face here. Something like that. I should have gone back up there a little sooner. Let's see if we just can't massage that out a little bit. Oh, I think that'll be okay. I think we got it kind of in time. There we go. I'm going to wait for that to dry up a little bit. I'm, okay. I'm happy with the way this is looking so far. Our little guy here. And I'm going to come down to our pine cone. And I think for the pine cone, I'm just going to use a little bit of this burnt umber. Fairly light to start. Yeah, that page is dried right up. And I'm just putting in a base color. I want to make sure I get the shape of this pine cone. I have it drawn in, but I drew it in very lightly so that even this blue that's gone over it, even though it's not very dark, I've lost a couple of the lines. I think I can just see enough of that. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do before I get too far? I'm going to stay with my burnt umber color here, maybe a little bit thicker. There we go, if you can see on the paint cam. And while I'm waiting for him to dry, or her to dry, I don't know if it's a him or her, while I'm waiting for the bird to dry, and while I'm waiting for my pine cone to dry, I'm just going to draw in a few little lines here that are my branch, and I'm Get about the best way to do this without touching the paper. I guess what I need to do is just kind of decide where I want it to go and give a little pull. My paper did buckle a little bit, you can see here, and because of that, 
because the paper buckled a little bit. And, well, and to be honest, because I don't have the most steady hand in the world, you can see that it's not uh, totally straight and uh, one uniform width. But in, in, in the end, we're going to put enough uh, pine needles on that that it really won't bother us. Okay, I'm going to come back into my, there's, this is still just a little damp, come back into my burnt umber, add just a touch of Payne's Gray. I added just a lot of Payne's Gray. There we go. And I'm going to start coming in and trying to define. That's, that's too dark, too dark, too dark. That's going to be better. I'm going to try to define where this house, some of this pine cone is. You're going to be able to see in just a second. It's going to start to take pine cone shape. There you can kind of see it there. Looks pine cone-ish. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Pine cone isn't uh, isn't going to be the main focus. And as long as it looks generally like a pine cone, people are going to accept that it's a pine cone. Okay. So uh, let's see. What do I want to do now? I want to, while I have it here, I'm going to come in with some dark color. I might even use this color that was down here that I mixed a little too dark previously. That's a nice color. And I'm going to put that in here for this guy's tail. And I'm going to try to leave a bit of a rough edge at the top where he's got some little feathers that are protruding down over that are white protruding into the darker color. If that makes sense to you. And his tail goes behind everything back here. So I'm going to going to leave that, but as I go down a little further, I'm going to let it lighten a little bit because down here, I want you to be able to see it when it's done through the pine needles, but I don't want it to be so strong in those needles that it, that I can't paint green over top of it. So I'm going to leave it just about like that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy, happy, happy with that. Uh, let's see what do I want to do here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really light layer. I'm just testing to see how dry my paper is here, if I can rest my hand on it or not. I don't think I can yet. But what I can do is, yeah, I got a little blob right there. I can come back in and continue while I'm waiting for that continue to define this pine cone. So each time I do this, I'm just thinking, what's the darkest part? And the darkest part is right around these little needles way up in there. See, really nice and dark. And then if I need to, I can, I can really pull some of this down a little bit. We can put another layer on here and pull this down. Uh, if you're watching this and you're seeing my paint come down a little bit, I guess I didn't mention this before. If you've seen my paint come down just a little bit down the board, it's because I have my board, my paper on, oh, I would say about a 10 degree uh, slant. And let's see, this particular pine cone at the end of, I want to do this, I forgot to do this at the beginning. This particular pine cone has these little spikes that come off the end of some of these. So I don't need those on all of these petals or, or leaves or <laughs> I don't know what you call them about pine cones. But it's got a number of these spikes on it, nonetheless. 
So we can put some of those on there. And I know it looks a bit of a mess right now. But just wait till we're done. We're going to add more to it. Pine cones obviously aren't my specialty, but it's getting there. It looks generally pine cone-ish. Pine cone-ish. Yes, pine cone-ish. Okay, I'm going to get back to my, my bigger brush now. Uh, my mop brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of color around the side of this guy what I want to do is build up a little bit darker color on the edge here because I want it to look as though there's some depth to him and one of the ways we can do that is by painting a bit on the outside and leaving the inside of him, the inside meaning this part here, a little bit lighter. If it's a little bit lighter, your eye's going to pick that up as being a little bit closer to you. That little bit that's darker with that same logic is going to seem a little bit darker. It's going to seem like it's a little bit further away from you. And before you know it, we will have a bird that is now painted in three dimensions, something like that. And I hope he looks like he's got some roundness, some girth to him, girth, girth to him. I think that's the word I'm looking for anyways, girth. I'm going to get a mix of my neutral tints and Payne's gray. I know that this is dry enough to touch now. And I don't need this too thick. I just put that little bit on there. I think that was going to be a little too thick. There we go. I'm going to paint this right around his head, right where that black cap is. And now I can come back in, pull this way. I wor I'm worried about painting outside of his head. I don't want to paint outside of his head and get some weird shaped head. There we go. And I think I can get this in here too. Comes up to his bill. Down and around. I got a little bit of run and I'm going to leave that there. I'm not even going to try to fix it. I think it's going to add to our painting. I'm going to go in on his beak right now. It's just he's got a pretty plain black beak. There's not much to it. There it is. Now I know he doesn't have an eye and that's okay. We're going to get to that. We're going to give another layer to his um, black cap here. Oh, no, look, I tried to do something. I think I messed up his, <laughs> his beak. That's okay. It looks fine. Uh, but what I need to do in the meantime, before I get to the second layer on that, is mix up a little green. So for me, this is going to be, what is this, cobalt green with just a, a, a touch of hooker's green. I'm going to actually not mix these too much on the page. I'm going to mix them a bit with the Aurelian, Oreolin, I'm sorry, Oreolin, and a little bit of our burnt umber. And I'm just going to mix those until I think I get the color I want. Because what I want to do is start to put in my pine needles. Just generally starting 
on that branch that I drew and pulling them out they don't have to be the exact length they don't have to be exactly on that line if you just excuse me for one moment while I turn this to make it a little bit easier Now you're probably asking, why did you mix the two different colors? Well, I mixed the two different colors because I want a bit of variation in these pine needles. I want some a little lighter and I want some a little darker. In fact, I might mix a little Payne's Gray in on some of these. And if I get some that are a little thicker and if I get some that are a little thinner, I'm pretty much okay with that. But the pine needles are just a lot of repetition. I'm sure my hand is, my arm is right in front of where everybody wants to see. It's a lot of repetition and you go back and you do several passes so that not any one pass has too many in the same direction right this our up here already looks a little too uh, too worked I shouldn't have done that many at once right there and you can mix in a little bit of blue in there too if you want it is a winter scene you would think that you'd have some that would be a little darker and just have a little fun with it doesn't take that long to do and if you just used one color of green well it would be fine but really it would look a little off because when you look at a, a pine branch there's lots of different colors mixed in there there we go, that's looking better up here to me. In fact, I need a little bit more yellow up there, so a little bit more of the Aurelion, Oriolon. Someday I'll get that color, right? That's a hard one to say. There we go, and down here, I could darken that up a little bit, so maybe a little bit more of the blue. There we go. And this is, now you see down here why I wanted to lighten that tail up a little bit as it goes uh, behind there. All right. And now I'm going to attempt to fix my pine cone just a little bit. But trust me, when somebody sees this, they're not going to go, oh, that's a perfect pine cone. It's whatever. Or they're not going to go, oh, that's a terrible pine cone. They're going to look at the bird and their brain is just going to tell them, pine cone. There we go. A few more of these. You know, I think I know what the problem is. The problem isn't really the pine. Well, the problem is me, really. But the real problem is that I have these few right in the middle where it looks like I've just got one line that comes down off of them. I've got this thing up here. Oh, I've got some. Oh, I got more bristles to go here. These are coming down this way. Oh, yeah. Number every time I'm going into my paint over here, I'm just grabbing a slightly different color to put on there. It's that whole mix of different colors that's going to make it look a whole lot better. All right, so actually, I don't think this has turned out too bad. This little area right here bugs me, but I can live with it. 
The rest of that pine cone I don't think is too bad. I'm going to add a, just a little extra color in here. And this is just my raw umber. Just going to mix a little bit in here. Here and there. Yeah, actually, I think that helped quite a bit. Looks like a better pine cone now, but the real star over here is our bird. Now, what I want to do for our second layer of black on this guy is mix up a bit thicker of a paint. You know, I don't think this is quite going to be thick enough. Because when I put this on, I want it to get a little texture. I don't think I'm going to get it. I think I got it a little too loose. We'll add texture a different way. I was hoping to get it a little drier so that when I put it on I picked up a little bit of the texture of the paper and was hoping to use that as a bit of the uh, feather texture. I didn't quite get that. That's okay. And right here, if you've got any parts that you think, oh, the paint ran or spread into an area that you didn't like and you want to cover it up, now is the perfect time to cover it up because you're painting a darker color over all the lighter colors. It makes it really easy to do. There he is. And we need to take that same color, paint some toes on here for him. Let's see, he's got a couple of toes that come out and go over our branch here. That's exactly the texture I wanted for his hair. For his hair. Oh, what am I talking about? For his feathers. For his hair. That's funny. Uh, let's see, we got a leg that comes out right here. And toes that come down. Something like... That, there's the toe. You know what, I'm just gonna darken up. I shouldn't fiddle, I know I shouldn't fiddle, and I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna darken up up here, just under, it's kind of a shadow, a dark shadow area up there. And I just wanna darken that up a little bit. I don't need to do too much, that is better, I think. I'm going to just give him a hint of a wing back here. There we go. And I'm going to do just a tiny bit on this side. Something like that. And now I need to paint his eye. And it's going to be a little tough on here. But I'm going to make his eye come just underneath the black into the white. So you'll be able to see it. And then I'm going to give it a highlight in just a second. I'm trying to keep this really thick so that it differentiates from there we go from the paint uh, below it but thin enough that uh, it'll still move a little bit there's a happy medium in there hopefully I've found it I'm just going to give a little extra color to the bottom of his beak and I'm going to come back in with my raw umber and just every so often I'm going to give a couple of marks here and there. He does have some feathers. He is a bird. He should have a few feathers here and there. Where I'm in that blue-gray area, I'm going to use a little bit of gray. The feathers, these few little lines on him also will help define some shape. 
I'm going to give him some over here on his head. I'm going to turn this upside down real quickly. Don't hate me because I turned it upside down. It just makes it a little easier. A couple, a couple here and there. We don't need a whole lot. We're not trying to, oh, that one's big. <laughs> We're not trying to paint every feather on him. We just want to put a couple on there. So when you view this, he just doesn't look totally flat like there's nothing there. All right, just a couple here and there. I don't know. I think that's about enough. enough. I'm going to give him a little line down here on his tail feather. And maybe a couple, I don't know if you'll even be able to see them, maybe straight Payne's Gray, just a couple in this black area. There you go, I think you can see those. Now I promised that I was going to put oh, a highlight on his eye. Here is my highlighter, ha ha, my cheater. Give a little dot there, and I'm going to give him a little line on his nose. Maybe a dot on his knuckle. Here and there, something like that. And that is how I do the black cap chickadee. I'm going to sign that and call this one done. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope that helped you out. Let me turn the paint cam off. There we go. Thanks for stopping by the studio tonight. If you like this, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you back here in the studio another time if you're able. Until then, thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. Bye-bye.